Goodness me, didn't AMD do well with their big Navi event last night? They took me by surprise in a good way, and I am utterly relieved to report that because the fact of the matter is I'm going to be buying a Radeon RX 6800, probably the XT model in a couple of weeks' time. And I'm glad to report it looks like it'll be a good graphics card rather than potentially a hot piece of, well, semi-junk actually. So this is very good news. And the reason I'm telling you this is because I'm in the same position as you. I, when it comes to graphics cards, am a paying customer. This Palette RTX 3080 is mine. I bought it with my own cash because when I'm doing case reviews, I have to use hardware that looks up to date. Hence the Palette. These graphics cards behind me aren't mine. They came from Dominic and from Gigabyte respectively and will be returning to them. And when I buy the Radeon RX 6800, probably XT, I'll be paying for that with my own money. So I was watching last night's event with keen interest, as no doubt were you. We've covered it on KitGuru already, so do head over there for the full news. But this is my hot take on what I think about AMD Big Navi. To begin, Lisa Su laid the groundwork by pointing out, as we know, that AMD owns the console space. The upcoming Xbox Series X and PlayStation 5 are both AMD hardware, and they frankly look really impressive. I'm seriously considering buying myself a console as well, which is uh, looking like an expensive few months coming up. But the consoles look like they are frankly, potentially PC killers, which is a terrifying thought. So AMD is competing both with Nvidia and also with themselves in the console space. Strange but true. Then we have the slide showing PC gaming platform, which obviously is what we're interested in, with Ryzen 5000 and Radeon RX 6000. And the thing is, the hardware looks really conventional. Now, this is exactly what I was expecting. So when we see the slide about RDNA 2, we're seeing an improvement generation over generation in terms of power, which potentially could mean the same performance for less power or a bit more performance for a bit less power or however you want to slice that particular cake. That again was what I was expecting to see. The word efficiency used repeatedly. After all, AMD is on 7 nanometer. The original RDNA wasn't brilliant. RDNA 2 is touted to be an improvement. Put those bits together and you're looking at something that might take us forward, but might potentially not. And then we come to their revolutionary Infinity Cache, and this is where things start to look interesting. I was um, WhatsApping back and forth with Luke while we we're both watching this uh, video, and we both at that point said, oh yes, this looks, well, what is this? It's a technology, according to AMD, obviously we haven't tested it yet, where they're able to reduce the width of the memory controller but by using cache, able to speed up memory access, hence higher performance for lower power draw, which takes us back to the thing, AMD making claims about efficiency. Is it actually better? Are we nuancing the issue? Infinity cache, however, it looks interesting. High speed design, 30% frequency increase on the same power on seven nanometer. Okay, nothing too unexpected here. As to whether that's a 30% increase fleetingly in a boost mode or whether it's a sustained speed, that obviously makes a massive difference. This is why we have Dominic ready to benchmark the bejesus out of these graphics cards. But that's an interesting number. Is it gonna take us beyond two gigahertz, which is what we want to see? And then we get to it. AMD Radeon RX 6800 XT. Now you can't directly compare AMD compute units with NVIDIA CUDA core, so we're not gonna try to, but clock speeds and this new Infinity cache and the amount of memory and board power, yup, those are all numbers that we can understand. 16 gig of memory in particular, that's AMD pushing forward, where frankly I was disappointed by NVIDIA. I paid quite a lot of cash for this 10 gigabytes of memory, believe you me. I'd have been much happier had that been 20 gigabytes. And then we see 300 watts of board power. This is putting AMD head to head with Nvidia in terms of power. I mean, they've got a slight advantage, but it's absolutely tiny. 16 gig of memory, okie dokie. Clock speeds looking really interesting. So now AMD's laying out their store with the 6800 XT for what? Taking on the 3080? or beating the 3080. 
Well, according to their graphs, obviously we don't trust other people's graphs till we've actually verified them ourselves, but according to their graphs, the Radeon RX 6800 XT matches RTX 3080 to within nothing. Takes slightly less power, it delivers the same performance. 4K gaming, 1440p gaming, they both look really good. AMD was talking about a couple of interesting features with some slightly quirky names. So one, rage mode. One click overclocking. In other words, there's some headroom in there, click a button and you get more performance. Well, okay. I've become used to manufacturers leaving very little performance on the table. They bin their chips. The memory is pretty much pushed to its limits. If you can increase a clock speed, the return is very slender. However, Rage Mode appears to be free performance. Why would I complain? AMD Smart Access Memory. Again, the WhatsApp between me and Luke was firing away. What is this thing? This seems to be saying that AMD RX 5000 processors, which launch in about a week's time, gain access to GPU memory, presumably using PCI Express for bandwidth. Well, what the heck's that all about? Does that backport to RX 3000 processors, even potentially RX 2000 processors? They're all PCI Express Gen 4, they all use Socket AM4, the chipsets have a huge amount in common. No mention, we're going to have to ask AMD about that and get clarification. But right now, your brand new upcoming Ryzen 5000 processor appears to have some secret source where it can gain access to GPU memory. And is that reading from the memory or feeding data to the memory? We need to know. This sounds interesting. PCI Express Gen 4 might actually finally have a proper genuine use. And obviously AMD as a supplier of both CPUs and GPUs is in prime position to use this technology. AMD took a bit of a poke at NVIDIA and you can't blame them saying, look, our graphics card looks like a graphics card rather than a very, very large thing with the power connectors all over the place, which obviously refers to NVIDIA's Founders Editions cards rather than the aftermarket cards. But right now that's an incredibly fair point for AMD to make. Two conventional power connectors that your power supply can definitely connect to versus the weirdo thing that NVIDIA's come up with. I must confess I quite like the look of those Founders Edition cards, but I couldn't buy one, hence I bought them a pallet. I would have liked a Founders Edition. There is no stock. That's my loss. And then we have the Radeon RX 6800. Speeds still pretty blooming good. 1800 megahertz boosting to 2100 megahertz. Still 128 megabytes of this Infinity Cache. Still 16 gig of memory. Board power, 250 watts. This is looking impressive. Now we only had the launch of the RTX 3070 the day before this video from AMD. So it would be unreasonable for AMD to have done benchmarking against the 3070, but it seems crystal clear that RTX 2080 Ti and RTX 3070 are where the 6800 is at. In my mind, there is no doubt about that. Loads of gaming charts, all looking good. All good news. And then Lisa Sue got to do her Steve Jobs and one more thing moment. And this is where the Radeon RX 6900 XT came out. This is the big boy with more compute units, still very high clock speeds, still 16 gig of memory. So in that respect, less than the RTX 3090, but 300 watts of board power, which compared to a 3090 makes it a pussycat. And just look at that claim performance. Now clearly AMD is going to pick and choose their benchmarks, but that new 6900 XT on paper looks pretty darn tootin. And it also means that AMD has the high end of their product stack. They're not saying, look, we can't compete with 3090, we've got the 3080, 3070, and we'll bring out some junior cards soon. They're saying, yup, NVIDIA's got these models and we have comparable models. And they told us the 6800 and the 6800 XT will be available 18th of November, so three weeks time. The 6900 XT, 8th of December. So what's that? Five weeks, six weeks time and in plenty of time for Christmas. And we have to hope that AMD will actually be able to supply these new graphics cards. I'm going to say they will. No doubt there'll be short supply initially and we might have a few scalpers and such like. But I think AMD is going to be able to supply because they have. We've now got good history with AMD delivering their new products. 
So my confidence is high. I think that when I slap down my credit card for a 6800 XT, I'll actually be able to get one. And then there's the pricing. So the RX 6800 is listed at $579, where an RTX 3070 is £469. That sounds like Nvidia currently has a small advantage. The RX 6800 XT, $649 against the RTX 3080 at £649 here in the UK. AMD is either matching or maybe going slightly cheaper. And up at the high end, the RX 6900 XT 999, where the RTX 3090 is an absurd £1,399 here in the UK or some crazy price over in the States. The RTX 3090, it's an obscenity. Anyone who's bought one, well, good luck to you. Obviously, reviewers that got sent them, fair enough have fun with your games and your SLI and your overclocking, why not? It all looks very amusing. The idea of paying customer buying an enormous RTX 3090, well, you're paying a fortune and I really hope it's working out for you. Personally, I'm not too inclined to buy an RX 6900 XT. That seems to me still to be rather expensive. But on the plus side, AMD has been able to respond to Nvidia's pricing frankly charge an awful lot of money for a graphics card and I'm quite sure make a healthy profit. I'm certain that Lisa Su is thanking Jensen Wang hugely. So to wrap this up, we've got a few interesting technologies that deserve some close inspection. AMD Infinity Cache, if that works as claimed, that sounds like a trick AMD's graphics people have learned from their CPU people. That makes perfect sense. We know the two teams are interlinked. And why wouldn't they be? AMD's leaning on its advantage of having both CPU and GPU people. It will be fascinating to see whether Intel can do a similar trick with their graphics side of things. After all, they've got CPU people. They haven't had GPU people, to my mind. So perhaps they will also learn something. But on the AMD side of things, Infinity Cache is making promises about a narrower memory controller working like a wider controller but more efficiently and that has to be a good thing. AMD Smart Access Memory or SAM, I'm not keen on SAM, sounds very interesting. The idea that the CPU can use graphics memory whether it's reading or writing or both, that's new to my mind. That is something I want to see in action because potentially that could be really good. Unfortunately, I'm using a Threadripper 2000 at the moment. Am I going to have to change over to AM4 and Ryzen 5000? Will I be able to switch to a newer Threadripper? Who knows? I need to find out. This affects me personally. And then we have AMD's rather naughty built for standard chassis where they're saying the graphics card has a length of 267 millimeters and it has two standard 8-pin PCI Express power connectors. I quite like that. That's funny. It gave me a laugh. Why shouldn't they have a dig at NVIDIA when the uh, goal's as open as it is? So, well done, AMD. You've sold me. I'm going to buy your product again. I wasn't that impressed by the pricing of Ryzen 5000, but Big Navi, that sounds to me like a winner, and it should be keeping NVIDIA honest, which makes it even better. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, hit the bell button, head over to kitguru.net to read our news and reviews. This is Leo Says and a response to Radeon RX 6000 Big Navi.